Hey soldiers, we've got another cryptocurrency exchange that's having difficulties. Now, this will certainly continue to uh, shake the faith in that business model, cryptocurrency exchanges, because there are alternatives, cold wallets, you know, being chief among them. So um, is this going to just be the fate of all of these exchanges at some point? Is it just not going to work? Uh, we're going to get into what's going on over there with Binance. Let me uh, say briefly, though, as a matter of housekeeping, guys, I really appreciate all the comments. The comment section is just blowing up, and I do greatly appreciate that, as well as uh, you all viewing the channel and subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. I do want to say that, um, unfortunately, I don't always get all of the comments in real time. What Google, YouTube, what they do is they will send you the comments in your email. And uh, sometimes it'll be in your email, but it won't be on the video. Uh, so it's it's pretty inconsistent the way they do it. But I do see all of the comments. Um, I think I do at least. And the ones that I do see, I make an effort to comment uh, on those uh, if I can. Again, I might see it in my email and not on the video, and therefore I can't comment. So I just wanted to uh, let you all know that, okay? I do appreciate the comments, and I try to interact with them uh, wherever I can. Crypto exchange Binance will suspend U.S. dollar transfers. Now, this might be <clears throat> might sound a lot uh, worse than it is. We'll see. Uh, but again, it's definitely not a positive in terms of uh, bolstering the faith around Binance or around the cryptocurrency exchange uh, industry. Binance is the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. It's going to suspend U.S. dollar deposits and withdrawals. The company said this on Monday, the 6th of February, and they didn't provide a reason for the decision. Quote, we are temporarily suspending USD bank transfers as of February 8th, unquote. Uh, that's actually today for you, tomorrow for me. A Binance spokesperson told CNN that affected, uh, affected customers are being notified directly. The company said that 0.01% of its monthly active users leverage U.S. dollar bank transfers, and they also added that uh, they are working hard to restart that service as soon as possible. But here's the thing. I don't know about you, but when it comes to my money, uh, restarting and stopping and, you know, uh, just doesn't uh, give me the warm and fuzzies, you know. Uh, Binance U.S. Now, this is important. Binance U.S., a unit of the company that is regulated by the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN. They said in a tweet, Binance US said in a tweet, that it is not affected by the suspension. Thus, the move applies only to non-US customers who transfer money to or from bank accounts in dollars. Now, you remember when the whole FTX thing broke out, First, it was uh, confined rather to the uh, international uh, FTX. Then it kind of metastasized quickly and uh, infected FTX US. And then the whole house of cards fell. Now, I'm certainly not. Um, I'm certainly not suggesting that Binance is doing anything uh, untoward or illegal in the way that Sam Bankman-Fried is alleged to have done. Uh, but again. The FTX fallout definitely is making people think twice and question, uh, you know, whether or not they're gonna gonna have a great degree of faith in these financial institutions. When I think about a financial institution, I think about banks, of course. I think about insurance companies. But if you're into crypto, you're also thinking about these um, exchanges, and of course, we have the, uh, you know stock brokerages out there. So all of those entities are ones that, especially the insurance companies, the banks, and the brokerages, usually they've got 
a reputation that has been built over the course of many decades. In some cases, the better part of a century when you're talking about certain banks like J.P. Morgan or insurance companies, okay, like New York Life, just to name a few. So none of these cryptocurrency exchanges are coming into the game with that type of cachet. So it's even more incumbent upon them to do it right. Now, I have said in the past that some of what happened with FTX strikes me as engineered. If you look at Sam Bankman-Fried and Caroline Ellison, these two individuals were less than professional, less than serious, and far less than confidence-inspiring individuals. Uh, look, you can say what you want about me, but you know, first impressions are lasting impressions. And when you see Sam Bankman-Fried's disheveled, um, you know, uh, dis disheveled nature, even down to his voice, and some might say, "You're discriminating against the high-pitched voice people." I'm sure I'll get letters from some association representing them. Okay, everybody's got their little group these days, but um, I didn't like his voice. And I didn't like the way that I have this thing where I like to look people in the eye when, when I'm talking to them. Now, I'm not saying I'm some weirdo who's going to look directly into your eyes and not blink for the entire conversation. No, but if someone keeps looking down and trying to actively avoid eye contact, that, that sets my radar off a little bit. OK, and Sam Bankman Freed, that's kind of the way he rolled. As for Caroline Ellison, now she's the CEO of a hedge fund. When I think of a CEO of a hedge fund, I don't think of, um, you know, a young lady like that who, again, you know, laughed uh, incessantly uh, her, you know, and like and like and like then we did that and like then we went over there and did that. Um, again, it's just off putting. OK, so when I look at all that, I wonder to what extent was this engineered to really destroy faith in cryptocurrencies and kind of pave the way or clear the field for the CBDC. The world will never know. Data from Arkham Intelligence shows that following the announcement, there was a sharp spike in outflows from Binance's crypto wallets as millions of dollar pegged stable coins such as Tether and USDC flowed to rival exchanges or individual wallets. Binance's net U.S. dollar outflow was over $172 million for the day based on data from DeFi Llama. That represents a tiny amount of money for a company that has $42.2 billion worth of crypto assets. True, very true. So is this much ado about nothing? No, we'll see could cause some sort of cascade effect over the next few days as people, you know, want to make sure that their funds are secure. We're still overwhelmingly net positive on net deposits, the uh, Binance spokesperson said. Outflows always tick up when prices start to level off following a bullish market swing like we saw last week as some users take profits. Uh, that's, again, an additional statement by the spokesperson. Bitcoin rose more than 38% in January, its best month since October of 2021. Now, Binance has one of these exchange tokens, call it the BNB, it was largely unaffected by all of this news and held steady at around $328. So um, if you're, you know, allied with Binance in some way, that's a positive. In late January, Binance said U.S. banking partner Signature Bank had increased U.S. dollar transaction minimums to $100,000. At the time, Binance, had, uh, Binance said Signature had told the exchange that the new minimum applied to all crypto exchange customers. It's a little tough because I don't know if your average retail investor uh you know, has that kind of money just laying around to make a minimum, okay, $100,000. Regarding Monday's suspension, a Binance representative told CNBC in an email that Binance U.S. 
has its own banking partners and does not have any issues. The main Binance exchange does not serve U.S. users. Binance said customers can still use other fiat currencies or payment methods to purchase crypto. For the small number affected, we'll have a new partner to announce for those users in the next couple of weeks, the spokesman said. Okay, so looks like they're trying to address the problem. Looks like, um, you know, they're offering you another way to get this done through other uh, other currencies, other fiat currencies. Um, again, though, you know, for my money, I avoid crypto. Now, a lot of the folk that follow the channel and have subscribed, I know you're into crypto. And just like um, I say with all of the asset classes, I it is my sincere hope that you make lots and lots of money, okay? Just because I don't understand something doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, knock the hustle. Now, I have said in the past that um, I'm foggy on what crypto is backed by. And in mind you, I'm an introvert. I try not to leave my property. <laughs> uh, so I'm not out there. I'm not a good gauge of where this stuff is accepted and where it's not. But I do know that wherever I go, I don't see Bitcoin being accepted. And I've got to go to the gas station. I've got to go to the supermarket, the butcher, or the farm. Uh, I go plenty of places that you probably go to as well. So the utility question is there for me. And I know, thanks to subscribers, that... Uh, there's a, there's a strong technology aspect to this uh, that is over and above the currency aspect. I get that. And that is intriguing to me, although I do need to do some more study on it. Now, the last thing I'll say with regard to my trepidations uh, on crypto is that the um, United States government, no sovereign government that has a central bank is just going to allow a competing currency. They're not going to do that. You've got uh, this whole thing going on right now with the BRICS nations, specifically China and Russia, allied with Saudi Arabia, and they're trying to come up with a way to create an alternative to the dollar. All right. They talked about it. Saudi Arabia talked about it at Davos. Check this out. We did the report on it. It's right here if you want to get more information about that. So that's why I think, you know, for now. Money's still going to be the well, currency, at least, is definitely still going to be the domain, the exclusive domain, pretty much, of governments. Now, should it be that way? Um, I'm not sure. OK, I can set up a trade with you uh, if I like and we can maybe barter or agree on something like, uh, you know, Bitcoin. That is a unit of exchange. We can certainly do that if we come to uh, a meeting of the minds. But for more universality, you have to have something that most of the population recognizes as being worth something. Uh, and gold doesn't even fit that bill, to be honest with you, because uh, Mark Dice did a man on the street interview where people didn't eat. They, people valued an ice cream cone more than they valued one ounce of gold. Go check that out, that man on the street interview he did. But in the meantime, check out this uh, report we did about how Saudi Arabia is working with China to establish a new global reserve currency that will be used to pay for oil, a new petrol currency other than the dollar. Guys, I'll talk to you soon.